Hello, my name is Tomasz Poszetek and in this video I would like to discuss some um, technical details around approvals that we can find in Power Automate in well, Power Platform in Microsoft Teams. Basically, I would like to discuss um, where or what, what is required to for you to use approvals, so what solution has to be deployed and when is it, when is it being deployed, and as well what security roles we have um, and what security roles needs to be uh, assigned to users so that they can start using approvals within, within the environment. So, with that having said, let's start. Whenever you have a new tenant with a default environment just freshly being provisioned, or whenever you are creating a new environment, once you navigate to solutions, you will notice that there is just a very basic set of those uh, that you're actually able to use and or that they're actually being deployed. Being deployed. Um, and the point is, um, for the approvals, for the power to make approvals to work, you need to find here a solution that is called the Microsoft approvals. And so how to start with that? That's the most important thing because without it, you won't actually be able to work with approvals. So to start, you just need to navigate to your flows and then to create a very basic um, Power Automate Cloudflow that you will trigger manually that will use either create an approval or create and wait an approval actions, right? So in this workflow, I'm actually assigning a task. Let me assign it to just John Researcher. Um, and let's say that it is going to be assigned by myself. And so once this task is, once this action is actually executed, you will notice that there is going to be a new solution provision. So right now I'm just, I'm just going to save it. And there is this warning message here, because as you saw, there was no, uh, no solution yet deployed in my, in my um, environment. And it reads that the part of my approvals has not been installed for this environment. So I need to run this approval flow to initiate the provisioning, right? So with that, I will simply, yeah, just need to <laughs> turn it on. And once it is on, I'm now able to run it. So the Cloudflow is now running. Um, the first time this action is going to be executed obviously requires some more time. However, um, this can be done by anyone within the environment, so it doesn't necessarily need to be done by the system administrator or system customizer because this solution is being provisioned with elevated permissions uh, absolutely independently to um, who is the initiator of this action. The point is that whoever is the first person is actually deploying the solution so that everyone within the environment is going to be able to use that uh, approvals feature later. So now one size jump back to solutions. Um, I doubt that this approvals solution is already in place. Yep, it's not, it's now being deployed. So let's wait a second and in a moment I'll just refresh the solutions page and we'll show you how this works. And so after a five minutes or so, this action has been completed. Um, well, you can see that there was just one retry because um, the first status was like uh, four to nine. Um, but then the second one actually completed successfully. So now once I go back to solutions and refresh it, you'll be now able to see that there is already a solution called a solution called uh, Microsoft Flow Approvals and Microsoft Flow Approvals Core Solution. And this solution actually contains all these tables um, and custom APIs and uh, choice sets and like whatever else there is required for the approvals in Power Automate in Microsoft Teams to work. 
that I am discussing in my other videos. Like if you're interested, just jump over to my other videos around approvals uh, where I'm going through all these tables. All right, so now the party made approvals are in place. So if I navigate back to uh, the list of approvals, me now as an, initi an <laughs> me now as an initiator, I'll be able to see that I actually sent uh, one of the approvals at the reassigned task to journal researcher. Now, once I switch to journal researcher's uh, account, so that's a journal researcher, uh, the same environment and his approvals, then he should be now able to see that he was assigned a task. So now, what security roles do we have to make these kind of um, uh, approvals to work for the regular users? So basically, there are two security roles. The first one is called the approvals user, and that security role allows a user to actually have a read access to all these tables which are a part of the uh, of the solution, right? So user is able to actually access the data within these tables. Now, how does it happen that whenever a user uh, completes their task, data is being um, updated in these tables? Well, all these um, actions are being done on behalf of the system account, so with elevated permissions, and therefore a regular user does not need any kind of um, any kind of enhanced or uh, or elevated permissions to access these tables. And furthermore, they don't need uh, a premium license as well to, to use Power Automate approvals. Now, there is a second role that is called the Power Automate, uh, this is the approvals administrator. And this role has organization access, like full, full control uh, to all these tables which are being used within the approvals um, solution, plus some more uh, which are being stored in core records uh, and as I recall in business management as well, right? So here are all those um, tables that this role has an access to. And basically the purpose of this role, whenever it is granted to a user, is to give them an access to all data stored inside the approvals table. However, um, a user having this role is still not able to, for example, approve on behalf of other user or reassign a task assigned to other user. Nope, there is still no way to do these kind of um, activities or actions from the UI level. However, a person with this approval access, with this uh, security role assigned, uh, would be able to uh, execute uh, cloud flows which are working directly on Dataverse level which are then doing all the magic that I'm, again, um, mentioning and explaining in my other uh, videos around approvals. So let me just show you one thing. I have a solution that contains a flow that I'm using in my other videos to reassign a task from one user to another, because what I mentioned is that a user who is not assigned a task is not able to reassign other users' tasks even if that person is the flow approval administrator, or even if that person is the system customizer or system administrator in that environment. So what you have to do is to simply create your own, uh, your own cloud flow, which is simply following the logic behind approvals. And what I want to show you uh, is that, first, let me navigate to Power Platform Admin Center. And here I am now displaying the environment in which we are now working. And let me navigate to users just to show you the security roles being assigned. So I am here, that's my account. And I've been assigned the approvals user security role because I have initiated the provisioning of that solution which is required for approvals to work. Now, John Researcher here, he has as well been assigned the approvals user security role because this person has been assigned a task. So this happens somehow automatically. So whenever you're assigned a task, the approvals user security role is being assigned to you. However, the third person who I'll be showcasing or how we're using today, the Stefan Kowalski, um, he is just a regular basic user. He has no other roles. Furthermore, he doesn't have the approvals user role. So if I navigate back to my solution, and if I run now the flow, which is within this solution, um, 
which only purpose obviously is to reassign a task. And this is going to be this task. How this works, please navigate to the video that is called reassign any task. And now let's trigger it. And now I'll reassign a task from John because John was assigned a task and assign it to Stefan. Okay. And it failed. Oops. Now, why did it fail? All right. So um, the error reads that uh, actually the user who is now being assigned a task, so Stefan, that he is missing uh, the privilege, this, this flow security role, to read in approval request table. So I'm not able to create a task where I will make him an owner because he doesn't have the permissions, right? So the point is here that what I would need to do is actually to grant him the security role uh, in advance because Otherwise, I won't be able to, to run this flow. What I could try to do is to navigate here to the task that has been assigned to John and ask John, hey, can you reassign this task to Stefan this way? So right now, what is happening here is that Stefan is being assigned a security role and is being assigned this new task, right? So now task is on Stefan. Uh, once I switch back to the list of uh, users and open again security roles that Stefan Kowalski has, you can see that the approvals user um, security role has been automatically assigned. And with that, I am now able as well to, well, actually trigger this Cloudflow. Sorry, uh, trigger this Cloudflow but this time to reassign this approval from Stefan to John. Okay, so now back to Stefan. Now Stefan doesn't have the task assigned to him anymore. However, John uh, is going to have this task visible on his list again. All right. So with that, what I wanted to emphasize is that when speaking about the approvals in Power Automate, in Power Platform, basically, that two things you need to be aware of. The first one is that once you provision a new environment or once you create a fresh tenant, the default solution, the default environment or the new environment is not going to have these two solutions which are required for the approvals to work. To have this solution in place, whichever user that has an access to that environment needs to create a very simple Cloudflow that can be manually triggered and its only purpose would be to create an approval and assign a task to whomever. After the action that assigns a task is executed, these two solutions are going to be deployed and then whoever is going to participate in any approvals process is going to be assigned this role, the approvals user. Why? Because they need this role to have the read access to all the approvals related tables. And without it, as you saw, users won't be able to reassign a task or to work with, uh, with tasks, won't be able to see the tasks as well. So the point is, that um, after you reassign a task to someone or after you grant the security role to a user who is within the environment but still doesn't have that role, you will be able to follow all those scenarios, all those custom scenarios as well that I'm showcasing in my other videos to um, assign tasks, to complete tasks, to reassign tasks, to cancel tasks and, and so on. Okay, so with that having said, thank you very much for watching. And well, if you have any questions around approvals, simply write them down in comments below the video. Thank you very much. And well, until the next time, bye bye.